Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76, Entertainment and Media. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want to throw something in the tip jar, that information is below in the description box. Um, also, please consider uh, joining the uh, Big Words LLC newsletter in addition to being a YouTube content creator. I'm also a writer and I am working on a book. And uh, this newsletter is a way to um, consolidate my messaging across all my platforms and also uh, give the individuals who are interested in me in both capacities, YouTube and writing, uh, it, it's to give them or to give you all an opportunity to uh, follow me there in a more uh, concise and consolidated way. In any case, I um, and I'll be talking about the book more uh, on this channel in terms of being a literary work, and I'll be talking about the background of it. Um, in terms in terms of it being a piece of literature so look out for that um, so I wanted to well I I originally was going to do a live stream on this but uh, dr. Dunbar is very very busy and I thus decided to do uh, this uh, voiceover format which definitely has its advantages at times so I wanted to um, make uh, this this video it's called uh, the multiple faces of dr. Dre Andre young uh, one of the founders of uh, the uh, classic West Coast gangster rap group NWA which I started listening to when I was in middle school uh, I decided to, sh to shoot this or record this whatever you want to call it uh, after watching surviving Compton <laughs> which was uh, Michelet's story. And the reason I decided to do this is because these two movies, these two stories are two vastly different accounts and depictions of uh, Dr. Dre uh, slash Andre Young. So this is in large part about Dr. Dre. And I want to make this brief. So what I thought about when I was watching um, Surviving Compton because I saw Straight Outta Compton when it first um, Premiered at the theater. I loved it. It took me way back to the late 80s and the 90s and I was in the movie theater uh, Bobbing my head and, and you know bobbing my hand when certain and waving my hand when certain tracks uh, came on um, And I, I actually have a copy of the DVD here in my own personal library but what stood out to me when I watched Surviving Compton, which I think uh, I caught on Netflix or um, a streaming service, I didn't see it when it first came out, was that it was it presented a much different version of uh, Dr. Dre. Now, one of my beliefs is that he or she who controls uh, the history very much controls the narrative and very much controls our perception of historic facts and um, individuals and their legacies. So just briefly, when you watch Straight Outta Compton, uh, it's the story of what happened through uh, Dre's eyes, uh, Ice Cube's eyes, uh, probably to some extent MC Ren's eyes and DJ Yella. Those guys are still with us. As you know, Easy E passed away. Um, um, Easy E passed away. I don't have the exact date uh, in, in, in year uh, memorized. But the point is, is that it tells their story. And Dr. Dre, we know that Dr. Dre, well, at least in my opinion, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube were the brains behind that group. They were the creative force or forces behind that group. And once Cube left, uh, the quality of their music changed. And of course, once Dre left, there was nothing else because there, there were no beats to make. But it portrays them as heroes. It portrays them as pioneers. It portrays um, 
them as visionaries, particularly Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, the the, the you know the um, after the, the movie opens up with Easy, um, you know, taking part in a drug transaction, and then the LAPD comes and storms the house. But the next scene is Dre laying on his floor, listening to uh, I believe it's Right Airs, and it depicts Dre as this musical prodigy and visionary and then uh, basically again one of the two one of the two creative forces behind NWA and then the creative uh, the creative force behind Death Row Records we do see that uh, he does have a a, a baby mama and a child um, and then he later on uh, falls in love with Nicole uh, of course we know how that turned out today but in large part, Dre is a hero in the movie. And, um, you know, he loses his brother uh, and he goes through uh, a character arc, but he's in large part a hero in the movie. And you leave the theater uh, feeling good about that character uh, and just appreciating everything he created and um, how that group was a pioneering group and just what, what Dre was able to create himself and alongside Ice Cube and the others. And I thought Corey Hawkins, I thought Corey Hawkins uh, played him really, really well. Now, when you watch Surviving Compton, it's the complete opposite. It's told from um, Michelet's point of view. And so I, I didn't watch any um, post-production interviews of Surviving Compton, but when you watch it, it's clear that uh, the goal was to uh, portray Dr. Dre slash Andre Young as uh, an abusive, controlling um, lunatic. I, I don't know if lunatic is the right word, maybe bully, but he's portrayed that way. He's violent, he's aggressive, he's controlling, particularly of Michelle A. And I don't know if that's true. I, I you know, that's, it's, she told the story, and we know that, again, there are multiple points of view for any one thing in life. So it's entirely possible uh, that Dr there was that side of Dr. Dre in that movie. He was portrayed by Curtis Hamilton. Um, and, I, you know, there were stories of uh, Dr. Dre beating up D. Barnes. And I, I'm trying to think, did he throw her down the stairs? I know that he got violent towards D. Barnes and they even... Uh, made fun of it, him and Eminem uh, in uh, that one uh, song and video they did, I can't think of it um, but they made light of that whole D. Barnes situation and I know that, uh, I, I think in one instance Dre got shot in the in the rear end, so so you know, no Dre wasn't uh, a choir boy uh, and he, he had his issues and he came from Compton and um you know, a lot of his family's business has been in the news recently with his daughter and vice versa and, and his divorce. But I guess what I just wanted to communicate in this was that it matters who tells the story and um, it matters what their biases and, and, and points of view are. Clearly, uh, and straight out of Compton, Dre was not going to tell all the dark parts of his life and he was not going to paint himself out. He wasn't going to portray himself like the monster that Michelet did, but it just matters who tells the story. And uh, he or she who tells the story um, controls history and drives um, the narratives and, 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 and they drive how we see people and past events. Um, one quick um, factoid before I finish up. It uh, turns out um, Michelle A was portrayed in that movie by Rayon Nicole Brown, who uh, has a role in uh, Our Kind of People, which I, I created a, a little bit of content um, on that on this channel. I already mentioned that Dr. Dre um, in Straight Outta Compton was portrayed by uh, Corey Hawkins in what I think is a masterful way. Uh, in Straight Outta Compton, there was no mention of Michelle A at all, which may be why she felt the need to uh, create her own movie but interestingly uh the suge knight character uh or, sh or should i say the suge knight actor um is the same in both the movies uh 
it looks like this gentleman's name is R. Marcos Taylor. And he um, portrayed Suge Knight, Marion Suge Knight in Straight Outta Compton. And he portrayed him as well in uh, Surviving Compton. I think the only other time I saw that happen was with one of the Biggie movies, one of the uh, notorious B.I.G. movies where uh, the same actor played Biggie in two different films. Also, it's interesting, and this is before I, I really knew who he was. I'm trying to think if this was before Get Out uh, came out or before Atlanta came out, but uh, Lakeith Stanfield in Straight Outta Compton, he played uh, Snoop Dogg. And there's an iconic scene in that movie where Dr. Dre brings Snoop in for the first time and uh, Suge is like, who's this? And Snoop says, well, who are you, cuz? You know, and, and a, another fight almost breaks out at death row. Um, but that was before I knew who Lakeith Stanfield was. And he got Snoop down pretty well in terms of the voice and in terms of his mannerisms and in terms of how he looked back then. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say for this. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, he or she who uh, controls the, um, the history and the narrative... Uh, controls our perception of people and of past events. Uh, I think regardless, I mean, none of us are perfect. Uh, we all have flaws. We've all done things that we regret. I, I think that regardless of what happened with Dr. Dre and Miss Chalet, uh, it's good for us to acknowledge that. Uh, and Dee Barnes, uh, but also uh, keep in mind uh, what Dr. Dre was able to do as an entrepreneur uh, and just as a uh, creative genius. So we're all multiple things. We all have multiple parts and we all have good parts of our lives and um, things that we regret and things that we don't want to come to light. In any case, um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Did you see both movies? If so, what did you think? What are your thoughts on Dr. Dre, Michelle, Suge Knight, any of this? Uh, if you want to throw something in the tip jar, that information is below in the description box. Also, please consider joining the Big Words LLC newsletter. And uh, look out, again, look out for content regarding my book, The Engineers, A Western New York Basketball Story. Uh, I will be talking about that in uh, the, li the literary context in the near future. So enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, remember that your um, attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.